welcome to the channel. I hope you all are having an incredibly awesome day today. We had just arrived to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It was super neat coming into the speedway back over that way. They actually allowed us to, I say allowed us, the only way to get in here is to drive under the racetrack through the tunnel. Super neat just knowing that, you know, all the race trucks and anybody that comes for the big events gets to drive through the tunnel. Neat, neat, neat experience to be able to do that. We are here to actually check out the museum. Um, you've already got to see the Corvette Museum. If you haven't seen that one, I'll put the link above right now. Check that one out. The Corvette Museum. Super neat to say. I'm a big Corvette fan myself. Really enjoyed that one. I have a lot of neat stuff here. Going to see what they have inside here to share with you all. I definitely imagine that we're going to find some Indy cars. This track is known for having Indy car races and NASCAR races. So we're going to take a few more photos on the outside, then get in on the inside and see the neat stuff they have for us to enjoy. Alright, so we've made it inside the racetrack gift shop. So when we first come in, I mean, you can buy anything, Indianapolis Motor Speedway you can think of on both sides here. And if you're a Danica fan, they have a nice picture there for you. Again, anything you can think of here in the gift shop. Anything. All right, so we paid, we are walking in here, and my gosh, it is Indy car galore. All the way back as early as 1911 from what I understand. This is incredible, the, te the technology where it started at and works out today, this is absolutely insane. Wow. 1968, 1970, Indianapolis winner. This is a Bobby Unser's car. This is Alan Unser's car that was driven to win the Indianapolis 500 in 1972. This is absolutely incredible. These things are so neat and if you look I mean <laughs> the safety on these things back then were so extremely minimal you, you have your backrest there over the head not the backrest the um, the bar to um, protect the head right there in that area um, not very high though not high I'll get some more videos some cars to be going so we can see how the technology changed towards the modern day safety and such That last car that I just showed you, Alan Unser's, I was actually 70, not 72. Here's 71, same bar above the head. 78, they're all getting a little higher there. Look at that, look at the safety here, what safety. All right, here we are with a 1990 winner, but look at the, the safety there, so much higher. The driver sits substantially lower. Let's go here, 2011, so much higher. They're above the intake, above the head. Therefore, you know, with the, the safety of the way it's comes, the driver's gonna flip over. They're not gonna end up having their head smashed if everything works as it should. Team McLaren car from 1975. This is the M16E. Gatorade was the sponsor on this one. Also has the same colors as the Miami Hurricanes. Those Hurricane fans, go Canes. Guys, so many cool cars here. I don't, I don't know where to start, stop. I'm turning left and right. I want to show you all everything. I don't want to have an hour long video. These cars are insane. The technology behind them is nuts. Seeing so many different things I had no idea ever existed for Indy cars. I mean, this is absolutely nuts. I'm not sure if this actually had a cover over it and they just opened it up to show, but this is neat. It looks so extremely neat. The things you can learn in person by coming to these events are just insane. I don't even know what to say to that. Just incredible. So neat. 
This one, you can see the turbo on the back over here. This is Mark Donahue's car. Right there in the back there, right? And there's your turbo. Singles on it. And this one's back from 1972. This is the winner of that race. The 69 500 winner. It's like something out of out of a Mario Kart racing game. And with that being said, it's also Mario Andretti's car. No pun intended. All right, let's take this one back a little bit. This is a 1938 Maserati ACTF, the Boyle Special. This was the 39 and 40 Indianapolis 500 winner. So much incredibly different than you know, what's modern technology in these cars. How about the Porsche 962? This one, as I understand, was driven by Al and Al Unser Jr. This is my kind of car now. Yeah, if I was driving, this is what I would drive. Speaking of that, I want to get a car like this anyways just to drive, to go get groceries, and go back home and park it. This is absolutely incredible. So much more than just indie stuff here. Al Unser drove this in 93 at the Daytona 500. Boy, vlogging, all you recording. Microphones and headgear, all that mess. It sure has come a long, long ways. Imagine, imagine if you were stuck trying to shoot some video using this stuff. We have come so far. How is that for a view outside of the museum? Oh, it looks like Bobby Unser and Judd Phillips drove his car, the Unser boys. If I read correctly, they're from New Mexico. My sons are boys. It was brothers and a son, if I read correctly. A Lotus powered by Ford. These are the coolest things, guys. So many neat things here to see. Uh, I do not know if y'all can see this. Here comes what appears to be a Lexus. Might be a Toyota FRS. I'm not sure. Probably a Lexus. It's cleaner than FRS. Not going crazy fast. Then again, we're not comparing to an Indy car here. Cool to see. All right, so talking with my brother-in-law here, we're betting it's it's the Lexus RC350. Did you say it right, RC350? Yeah. RC350. It is also wild to um, look at the tires they started with. Um, this was the beginning. I mean, there's there's nothing here. Then again, of course, you know, the power was substantially different as well as much less. As power increased, so did the width of the tires. That's, that's like what I have on my Corvette there. All right, guys, check this out. We have made it outside. <laughs> How cool is this? Over there in that corner, that is the fuzziest ultra premium vodka turn to sweets. Showed you that at the beginning. This is a closer view of it. How neat is this? I see the one line here that may be pit road. I have no clue. It just looks like it could be pit road. Regardless, guys, highly recommend this. As you see, it was 95% indie cars inside there. This is Indianapolis, home of the Indianapolis 500. Whew. I need to exercise, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Until the next one, we'll see you then.